In this video, I'm going to take the model of the tunnel that I made in the last video, and I'm going to bring it to life in Unreal Engine by adding some lighting and materials, a few decals, and some props. So this is what the tunnel looks like in live gameplay mode. Uh, you can see the lights got a bit of a flicker going on, and you might have seen that garbage bag fell over. It's because I've added physics to these props, so they have a bit more realism. And so I'll just take you through uh, step by step how I started from scratch with the tunnel and blender and uh, ended up with this scene right here. Okay, I'm going to start off by making a new folder for my tunnel called tunnel and I'm going to import my model and uh, I'll select create new materials here that's going to make a, a basic new material for each of the materials that I set up in blender. Okay, so here's our curved tunnel piece and all of our basic materials, uh, just everything set to white to start with. And I'm going to set up a, a blueprint actor to set everything up for this uh, tunnel. So I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class and select actor. I'll call this uh, tunnel underscore actor. And uh, I'm going to open that up and add a component static mesh. I'll call this uh, the tunnel mesh and uh, set the static mesh here to the curved tunnel piece that I just imported. Okay, so what I'll do here is compile and uh, go back to the map here and I'm going to drag one of those actors out onto the map. We'll just check out the scale here. So looking at my uh, character here as a reference, I can see that the tunnel's a little bit small. I barely fit in here. And uh, so I'm going to increase the scale of the tunnel. Uh, I'm going to go into the actor here, select the mesh, go to scale, and say uh, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3. Okay, so I've scaled it up to 1.3 in all the dimensions. And we'll take a look here. Uh, and that looks quite a bit better. Yeah, that seems decent. The, uh, the hand railing here is just above sort of the hip and uh, seems to be a couple feet between the, the head and the ceiling. So uh, I'm happy with that. So next thing I'm gonna do is set up some uh, basic materials here for the tunnel. And um, what I wanna do here for this scene actually is uh, I'm gonna uh, set up sort of a night scene and we'll set up the lighting inside the tunnel to be the main lighting in the scene. So what I need to do is select my light source and uh, select rotate with E and I'm going to rotate my light source down to the, uh, well to nighttime to the back side. Actually I'm just going to turn it right to zero intensity. And uh, for my sky sphere here I have to click on the sky sphere actor and refresh the material. There we've got our night sky and uh, I'm actually just going to move the light source a bit more. Refresh the material again. There we go. Now we're fully nighttime. And uh, let's see, I want to uh, set up some of the, the lighting in the tunnel here. So I'm going to first set up the emissive lighting from the light bulbs. And so I'm going to open up the light bulb material. Um, I'm going to plug this into the emissive color rather than the base color. We don't want that in there. And I'll change the, the color of the lighting. I want it to be sort of like a halogen bulb look. Um, so like a yellow, kind of a deep yellow look to it kind of thing and uh, probably going to have to multiply this by some amount to uh, get it to glow uh, enough so I'm going to say you know multiply this by maybe 10 let's check that out <coughs> apply we'll dock this over here and take a look okay so so far that's not too bad that's kind of the look I was going for and uh, the next thing I'll do here actually is set up the material on the tunnel walls. 
So I open up walls material and for the base color, I'm just going to set uh, kind of a darker gray here. I'm thinking of like a concrete look. Uh, so let's see here. Of course, it's tough to see because uh, the emissive lighting isn't really putting enough light out. So I think the next step I'm going to do here is uh, create actual lighting on this. I'm going to go back to the tunnel actor and uh, oops, slow down my uh, slow down my camera here. Okay, and now I'm going to uh, add a component and add a point light. Okay, I'm going to drag this up toward the roof and uh, let's grab these handles here. drag it onto the uh, uh, in the place of this light fixture and I need to do a couple things here actually I need to um, set up the size of this uh, light bulb first I'm going to change the intensity here down to like uh, 2000 and uh, the color we'll set it to that yellow color um, Maybe something like this, uh, maybe a bit or orangey. Uh, okay, and uh, I'm going to set my source radius here to uh, something like uh, five. Um, so I've got this yellow uh, cage here now showing us the size of this light bulb. Um, and I'm going to change the source length here to uh, 25 okay so I need to rotate my cage here I'm gonna press E to rotate um, E uh, let's see drag it this way take a look here Okay, um, and I'll just size this a little better here. I'll say the source radius instead of five, let's say four. And the source length, 25, change to 30. Okay, so that's not bad. Um, and I'll just center this a little better on the bulb uh, model. So now we've got uh, an in-game light set up at the position of our lamp fixture in the model. And uh, for now, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually duplicate this and, and cover the other uh, three lights. Okay, so now I've set up the lighting and I'm going to uh, just take a look here in the world and check it out. So, all right, very bright, obviously, but um, that's fine for now. I'll leave it really bright while I set up these other uh, materials and other details, and then I'll change the uh, level of the lighting afterwards. So uh, what I'm going to do here is set up the railing and the uh, pipes along the roof here. So I'm going to open up the railing material. And for this one, I'm going to set the, um, let's see, I want to set the metallic to uh, 1. And I want to set the roughness to maybe 0.1. And uh, that's fine for the railing. Let's check it out here. Yep. And the uh, pipes on the roof. Uh, let's see, uh, roof pipes, okay. These ones I'm going to make uh, similar, but I'll change the color. So metallic one, uh, <clears throat> roughness, point one. 
And for the color here, I'm gonna grab like a kind of a brown sort of, I'm imagining like a copper look here. So I'm gonna grab this maybe brown look uh, like this, or more red maybe. Okay, yeah, that's pretty much what I had in mind. And um, so now I'm going to, uh, let's see, I wanna add some, uh, some texture to these uh, materials. So what I'm gonna do here is go to um, Quixel Megascans. Uh, I'm gonna go to the website. And uh, I'm going to go to uh, the imperfections category. And these are uh, roughness maps that you can download um, to give uh, a surface a specific look or an imperfection. And what I want to do here is uh, I'm going to look at grunge. And I want something probably just like this right here for the walls. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'll go ahead with this one here. And um, for the railings and the pipes on the roof, uh, I'm going to look under metal here and uh, this brushed aluminum looks good. I want something like this look, so I'm gonna download that. And I'll go back to the editor, and I'm just gonna make a new folder here called uh, Imperfections. And I'm gonna drag both of those files in here. All right, so uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Our brushed aluminum looks like this. And so if I grab that and drag it into my railing material, and what I'll do is I'll just delete this uh, 0.1 node for roughness, and uh, we'll drive the roughness with this texture map. All right, perfect. But I'll probably have to do some tiling on this. Take a quick look. I didn't apply that. Okay, yeah, it looks terrible so far because um, we're going to need a texture coordinate node. And this will set up tiling on the UVs for this uh, roughness map. I'm going to tile it by probably uh, 50 times. Um, yeah, that looks not bad, but I'm going to go ahead and increase that. I'm going to go to uh, maybe 75 times. Yeah, <clears throat> that's kind of the look I'm after here. So uh, we've got this brushed finish, and I'm going to set up the same finish on the uh, pipes on the roof here. Let's go to uh, drag this into the roof pipes material. And same thing, I'm going to plug this into the roughness node, uh, roughness pin, and uh, texture coordinate node again for tiling. Tile this 75 times. Okay, not bad. Uh, okay, so now I want to set up that texture on the walls here. I'm going to go to the, uh, drag this grunge roughness map to the uh, walls material and uh, plug that into the roughness and I'll set up a texture coordinate node into the UVs and uh, I'll just check it out first before I set a number up there. Uh, okay, it's actually not bad, but I'm going to tile it a f little tighter, let's say uh, five. Tile this by five times. Yeah, that's pretty much the look I'm after here. Sort of just a, a concrete, like a, a cast or a poured uh, concrete wall set up here. And okay, so I'm pretty happy with this uh, for now in terms of lighting and um, these initial materials. So I'm gonna move on to setting up some uh, details. And so uh, for the details, I'm going to, uh, I'm just gonna close these materials for now.
and uh, in the tunnel actor here I'm going to uh, let's see I'm gonna set up some uh, decals to start with and so for for the first decal here actually I'm just gonna make my own um, I'm gonna go to uh, GIMP uh, and GIMP is uh, free software anyone can download this I'm gonna go file uh, new uh, yeah, 2048 by 2048 sounds good. And I'm going to take my uh, select tool here, my rectangle select. I'm going to change to ellipse select. Uh, just make a random uh, selection in my uh, uh, image here. And then in the tool options here, I'm going to uh, change the position and size of this ellipse. So uh, I want this to be starting at, say, 100 by 100. And um, I want to go to uh, see 2048 minus uh, 200 is 1848. 1848. Uh, oops. <coughs> okay, yeah, I'm just trying to make this circle here. And uh, now I'm going to stroke the circle, edit, stroke selection, and uh, solid. Uh, line width 50 I'm happy with that I'm gonna hit stroke so I've got this solid circle here I'm gonna go to my text tool add a text here I'm just gonna type something um, like uh, let's say this is tunnel uh, h3 uh, select this change my font And the size here will make this uh, like thousand. Uh, yeah, that's actually perfect. Now you can make anything here. I'm just making um, an, an interesting detail to put on the tunnel here. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, export this. I'm going to save this as a PNG. Okay, and back in the editor, I'm going to uh, make a new folder under my tunnel folder called decals. And I'm going to drag in that uh, decal that I just made here, the H3 decal. So it looks like this. And I'm going to right click, create material, and uh, just leave the default name. Open that up. And I'm going to change this material domain to a deferred decal and the uh, blend mode here to translucent and uh, I'm going to drag the RGB node here to the opacity pin and I want to color this so I'm going to uh, take my RGB pin uh, multiply and put the output to base color and uh, I'm going to hold 3 here and t uh, click for a vector 3 node, plug that into B, and double click and change this color to uh, maybe a blue here. Set this to uh, like a dark blue, or medium blue, I'll just check it out. Um, so I'm going to park this uh, over here, and in the tunnel actor now I'm going to add a component and add a decal. And uh, I'm just going to drag this decal. Uh, let's see here. I want to put this kind of right by the entrance of the tunnel here. <clears throat> and I'll figure out my sizing in a sec here. I'm going to first set the uh, decal material to that um, H3 decal material that we just made there. And uh, let's shuffle this around a little. I can see I need to, uh, first I'm gonna scale this. I'm gonna make this a lot smaller. Let's say 64 by 64 by 64. And uh, I need to rotate it. Uh, let's try X by 90. Uh, okay, by minus 90. And I'll just, uh, manually, actually I want to put this on the other wall here. I'm going to put it over to here, here. Uh, so yeah, so it was uh, rotate by 90. And uh, 
There we go. Okay, and I want to make that actually a little bit bigger. So I'll scale it up now. Maybe like that and put it down a bit. <clears throat> okay, so that's my first detail. And now um, instead of just a basic tunnel, we're in tunnel H3, whatever that means. So, you know, when I'm doing um, design like this, I'm always just thinking of some kind of story, uh, you know, for a, if you have a specific uh, theme, obviously, or your, uh, your game already has a, you know, a storyline, then that's going to help out a lot. Um, otherwise, um, you know, I'm just kind of making something up on the fly as I go with something like this, uh, where it's just a one-off asset in, in a vacuum environment. Uh, I'm just kind of winging it, just make something up, right? So uh, let's make another decal here. And for the next decal, I'm going to uh, go back to the Quixel website, actually. And I'm going to go to the uh, brushes category. And I'm going to grab something interesting here, like let's go to blood and uh, let's grab this high velocity blood spatter. And uh, <clears throat> let's also go to uh, graffiti. And I'm going to grab uh, maybe this uh, toxic graffiti. And uh, let's look for another one here. Um, Mm, these all look really similar. There we go. There's a little different. It's got these drip marks. Let's grab this. I'm not sure what that says. Was that, uh, you, uh, well, whatever it is anyway. <clears throat> I'm going to download that. And uh, let's see here. I'm going to go to, uh, hmm. Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to stick with those for now. So I'm going to go back to the editor here, uh, go to my decals uh, folder here, and uh, let's see, I'm just going to uh, drag in that high velocity blood spatter and those couple of graffitis. Perfect. Okay, so for, for each of these, I essentially want to uh, just make the same kind of material here. I'm going to right click, go create material, and just open it up, change the material type to a decal, and uh, blend mode to translucent, and drag the RGB to the opacity. And uh, I want to multiply the RGB value into the base color so we can set uh, set a color. And maybe black is actually a good color for, uh, for graffiti. Let's check it out. Uh, oh, this is the high velocity blood spatter, not graffiti, right? So color, probably red is good. Set up a dark red here. And uh, actually, I'm going to uh, drive the roughness pin with a uh, zero here to make it shinier. And we've got shiny blood spatter, maybe too shiny. Let's put it in point 0.1. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so in the tunnel actor here, I'm going to uh, just name this first decal here. Uh, oh, it's not going to let me rename that. Uh, there we go. Rename. Hmm, okay. Um, Not sure what the problem is there. It's not going to let me rename that. So uh, here, variable name. This is my, what I want to do. Uh, H3 uh, decal. Okay. So I just want to keep track of these because I'm going to add a few here. So decal uh, and oops, I've set that up as a child of the H3 decal. Blood spatter one. Uh, drag it up to the uh, tunnel mesh here, uh, the default scene route. Okay, and we'll drag this also to the default scene route.
Okay, blood spatter. I'm gonna change the deco material here to blood spatter mat. Uh, we'll put it, the scale down to uh, decal size, I should say, 64 by 64 by 64. Move this to the wall here and uh, do some rotations. We need to rotate this maybe by 90. Uh, no, uh, X by 90. Let's see, is this the right way? Uh, I need to rotate this manually. And uh, yeah, that's, that's facing the right way and everything. Okay, so let's say uh, that's a little bit high off the ground. Let's put it, you know, maybe here. And uh, yeah, I'm happy with that position and everything even. Let's uh, go ahead and maybe duplicate that. But this one I'm going to put uh, over here. Maybe up here. So we've got some that's uh, projecting onto the railing there, which uh, seems interesting. And so I'm happy with that, even though it's the exact same uh, spatter, you know, you could, there's a hundred of them there. You could pick a different one, spend some more time on it. I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. And uh, the next thing I'm going to do here is add um, the graffiti. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select my default route, add a decal. And I'm going to call this Graffiti 1. And we'll uh, set up that graffiti material here. I'm going to right click uh, Toxic Graffiti Create Material. Okay, I'm going to quickly set this up like I did the last one. Okay, and I'm going to set up the other graffiti material as well. Okay, and I'm going to set this uh, decal material here. Let's go back to the actor. Set this uh, graffiti one decal material to that uh, toxic graffiti mat. And uh, again, change the size here. We'll go to 64 again. Move this towards the wall. Uh, maybe a bit this way. and uh, rotate, uh, let's see here. Oops. Uh, okay, so 90 degrees on the X. <clears throat> okay, and uh, this one, maybe I'll make this a little bigger, so uh, I'm gonna scale it. Yeah, I like that, seems good to me. Okay, and uh, for the other graffiti here, um, let's go, we'll just duplicate this and move it to, uh, let's say, over here. And uh, I'm gonna change the decal material to the, uh, the other graffiti there which was called uh, 
I guess this one here. I didn't rename that one. Okay. Uh, perfect. So now we've got uh, a few details going on here. We've got our uh, H3 label, our blood spatters, and our uh, graffitis. Okay. Um, Next thing I'm going to do here is, uh, let's see, we'll compile, take a quick look here. Yeah, looking not bad. <clears throat> uh, okay. I'm going to go back to the uh, Quixel website. And I'm going to go to, um, let's see here, uh, decals. And uh, I want to find, uh, let's see. Let's look at uh, street. Mm. Debris. Trash. Yeah, I'm going to add some trash here. Uh, I'm going to download this garbage pile right here. Okay. And um, I also want to add some, uh, this is going to be basically just a texture of trash. I want to add some physical trash. So I'm just going to go to 3D assets. Let's find some props here. Uh, props. Uh, let's see. Trash. Perfect. I'm going to grab uh, these trash bags right here. And uh, how about these uh, dirty burger boxes? Looks good. Let's get them. Okay, so I'll go back to the editor here and uh, set up those props I downloaded here. So I'm going to make a new folder, props, uh, new folder, trash, bags. Okay, and I'm going to set this up real quick here. Okay, I've set up all of those uh, props from uh, Megascans there, and I'm just going to drop the garbage bags kind of around this area here. Let me put one on this side. Oh, yeah, it's got a kind of a flat, uh, flat side to it here. Can do something like this, and uh, put it right up against the the wall here. Okay, and uh, let's see here the burger. Oh, I forgot the uh, forgot the the uh, trash texture. I'll set that up real quick here. quite sure. Uh, this is what I'm after though. And uh, what we'll do here is set, uh, let's see, I don't want the, uh, I don't want this uh, climbing up the wall like this. So we need to set the decal position. Uh, it starts to go through the ground. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just go to the Tunnel mesh 
receives decals unselect. And uh, that's not going to work because we need to receive those decals. Okay. So it just means I have to uh, size this accordingly. I'm not going to be able to just uh, wing it. Okay, let's grab uh, decal actor. This is going to be trash decal. And I'll change the scale. Uh... Okay. Problem mostly solved. So, uh, let's see, I'm going to turn these lights back down. That's way too bright. And we'll add these burger boxes. Okay, so now we've got a combination of some fake trash and real trash. And uh, this is looking, when I say real, I mean uh, 3D. Looking not bad. Um, okay, let's see here. Uh, okay, not bad. One thing I could do here is add uh, collision. Okay, so I've added collision. Now we can't walk right through the walls here, uh, but we can walk right through the trash, and so that's not good. Let me add uh, some collision to that as well. Okay, I've set up collision on the trash bags and on the uh, burger boxes, and then I've actually set all those to uh, simulate physics. And so let's just see what happens here if I walk up into this trash. I can already see that bag just fell over, and I can kick this bag around. All right, so this is not bad. I need to uh, turn those bags to not receive decals. And see the burger boxes, I can kick those around. Yeah, all right. So uh, this is our new uh, AAA game here called uh, Take Out the Trash. And you basically have to uh, clean up the neighborhood by taking these trash bags <laughs> and kicking them off the, well, okay, anyway. So the game needs some work. But uh, yeah, not bad. This is a, a decent little, uh, uh, detail to add to this tunnel here, I think, you know, it's a little bit of trash. Okay, I'm going to turn off uh, receives decals on these trash bags so they don't look like that. Let's see here, 
like this. Yeah, we'll just grab all these actually. Receives decals. No. And, uh, okay. That's it. The other thing I could do here is uh, change these here so I can't step on them. Uh, step up on them and that means we'll basically be kicking them every time instead of uh, instead of trying to walk on them character can step up on no there we go now we're kicking them always instead of uh, trying to step on them okay one more thing I'm gonna do here is uh, fiddle with this lighting and so uh, let's see what I want to do is open my uh, actor tunnel actor and I'm going to go to the event graph and uh, let's see on the begin play here I want to right click I'm going to add a timeline um, lighting and we'll play this timeline right off the bat when this actor starts. And I want to add a float track here called uh, Light Intensity. And uh, let's see, what I'm going to do is plot some, uh, some stuff here between, let's see, I want to zoom out. Okay, I'm going to plot some lines, some, some values uh between let's see i'm going to make this a length of like eight seconds between zero and one i want to go okay so we'll be at one for the majority of the time uh shift click and uh let's see on occasion we will uh have a, a flicker happen with the lights so we'll do this and uh a little, a little later we do oh oh flicker again a little later, um, we'll do another little flicker, and uh, another little half a flicker. Scroll down the timeline here. One here, 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 and uh, maybe like right like this. Okay, it's going to give some uh, flickering character to the uh, lights, and I'm going to hook that up by grabbing uh, the, four, uh, the four of these lights. I'm going to drag them all on here, and we're going to say uh, set intensity, And uh, when this timeline updates, we'll set the intensity to this lighting intensity value. I forgot also, I got to set that to loop. And uh, we're going to set the intensity for all four of these lights. Um, let's see, actually, if we set them all at the exact same time, then uh, let's see. Well, let's try that at first. I could, I can fiddle around here after and maybe make a, a, a delay, set up a separate timeline for each uh, light. We'll check this out here. Okay, that didn't work. Uh, okay, begin play, set intensity. Right, we're setting the intensity to between zero and one, and so that's not going to work. What we need to do here is say uh, multiply, and uh, oops, so we're gonna multiply by, uh, I think I set these to around thousand maybe 500 say five by 500 for now drag all these into here and that 
that should work. Yeah, okay. So there we go. We got our flickering light situation. <coughs> our kickable trash, graffiti details, blood, and our uh, A little bit of glitching going on here with the physics. Our H3 label here. And uh, I think the lighting needs some work here. It's going all the way to dark. And that's not really what I want. Um, what if we do uh, light intensity? Uh, okay, just times 100 and uh, add 400 flat. So now we'll only be uh, fiddling with the 100 uh, value of the intensity. We'll be at 400, between 400 and 500, depending on uh, that timeline. See how that looks. A little better, but uh, it's almost too uniform, really. What we need to do here is change the uh, timeline here. We'll add some, let's say, uh, more noise uh, at certain points here. Uh, not bad could use some work and you know, of course you could spend you know However much time uh, fiddling with all kinds of these details right to make everything uh, looking better But overall, I'm pretty happy with this for now. Um, you know, I think this is a pretty good result from where we started and uh, So I'm gonna leave it at that Okay, let me know if you have any uh, questions in the comments below and otherwise. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video